Hi, everyone. This is the Conformance Working Group monthly meeting on May 24th. Uh, please remember that this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so please be respectful and remember that what you say will be recorded. Uh, we have an agenda which I am projecting. Hopefully, this is coming across. Uh, First up on the agenda, we have an update on the current state. Uh, and I, I think this is a reasonable place to start with each uh, of these meetings. Let's see, there's some information from the chat. Great, Doug dropped in the doc with the agenda. Uh, feel free to add to the end, end of the agenda now if you didn't uh, make that. Uh, so first up, we have Aish is going to give an update on the current state on API coverage uh, numbers as of today. Um, yeah, so these numbers, uh, I got it from running Omichi's tool, uh, which basically gets the, touches, gets the endpoint coverage. So this was run against master, so it took the test from masters and uh, master branch and ran it. And uh, yeah, stable, we have about 18% coverage and overall we have about 11 it's not much of a jump from where we were at 10.2, um, 10 um, understandably so, because we are, we are just wrapping up on um, adding more coverage in the areas that we'll be discussing further down. Should, we go on, should I go on to the next item in terms of prioritization? Or? Uh, sure, any questions on the coverage numbers, how those are, uh, how those are collected or any additional questions on that? If not, we'll move along uh, to the prioritization uh, agenda item. I'll add a pointer to the coverage tool itself so that anybody wants to take a look at the code they can. Um, so as for prioritization, um, so we met with SIG ARC a couple of weeks back. There's an um, update on that coming further down in the agenda. But from the meeting, it became clear that um, yeah, we, want, we want to focus on uh, components that can be easily swapped out by providers. Um, at least we want to focus on that for our first round of uh, confirmance coverage. So towards that, I met with SIG Node um, early this week. And we have a couple of volunteers from there to, who can help us cull through all the APIs that we are tracking, uh, specifically the pod ones, and then identify ones that already have coverage um, and also ones that need to be prioritized for the first round. Um, and once we have that list, I plan to sit with them and uh, define user journeys, which then our vendors can help automate. Um, I opened tracking issue for that this morning. Um, so I'll, I'll keep that issue up to date um, with progress there. Um, the, I plan to do the same thing for API machinery. Again, I opened another tracking issue. We have a couple of PRs in flight. Again, they are linked down in the agenda. Um, they are already, there are some end-to-end -end tests being proposed to be added to confirmants for watch and uh, aggregator. Um, so that hopefully those tests will go in 111. Um, we will then be evaluating gaps and seeing where we should increase coverage for 112. So hopefully for 112, um, it, by the next confirmants group meeting, I will have uh, identified hopefully a couple of APIs that we will increase coverage for in 112 for both pod and API machinery. Um, so that's those two. And then there's some confirmance program update. Yeah, I expect this one is probably Dan. Uh, and we will come back later in the agenda to some of the process improvements and visibility and communication issues that were raised, uh, I think, by the steering committee initially. Uh, so let's hold on that part of the conversation uh, until later in the agenda. But any questions? Okay, on I'll just give the yeah very brief update here that um we're up to 58 certified vendors which of course is completely insane and um really makes this one of the largest and most successful certification programs i'm aware of um and uh we did this refactor about a month ago where we divided um uh the all the certified products into being distributions uh, hosted platforms or installers um, and we're then tracking that number. And other than a few Twitter fights and such, I think that most folks have found that distinction useful. And then we are tracking the number of um, certifications from different levels. The one other piece I'll just remind people of is that um, the there's a small number, four or five implementations that are only certified for 1.7 and haven't done 
a newer certification. And those folks now have another month and a half to certify as either 1.9 or 1.10 in order for their 1.7 certification to remain valid. Um, and, you know, we're emailing them and reminding them and such. Um, but if they don't, then the 1.7 certification goes away. Hi, Dan. This is Deepak Pritz from Huawei. Hello. Hi. Hi. Just, just to let you know that, uh, yeah, we are one of those. So our certification is was on 1.7. And we are working towards that, uh, towards 1.9 uh, certification. And there's one issue left. So we should be done pretty soon, actually. That's great to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved to hear that. I will just make the quick pitch since I've got you that we really are interested in having you certify fusion stage as well. Definitely, You're one of definitely. only, yeah, like yeah. six known non-certified implementations. So. We, we, we have, I think there's more work involved there, but we are definitely working towards that as well. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks for that update. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Jago. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dan, and congratulations for the ongoing success here. Uh, I'm, you know, let us know if we need to focus on how the communication and the end of the life cycle uh, unfolds. If we need to improve the process, uh, we can put some effort into that in this group. I mean, we have contact info for all the people as part of their application. So um, they are reaching out to them. It's, it's mainly just, are they going to prioritize it or not? Excellent. And of course, if they did fall out for 1.7, they're always welcome to come back again. It's just that older version that would lose certification forever. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, uh, moving along. Uh, conformance coverage for 1.11 stable features. Uh, back to Aish. For yeah. this one. Um, so I took a look at the features that are going to stable in 1.11. So four of them are going, and I was following up with the owners yesterday to see if they have um, if they have enough representation in the conformance suite. Two of them, um, both the RBAC, um, the RBAC one was um, identified as need not, I mean, not required to be a part of conformance. So we have omitted that. And the second one is um, core DNS will be replacing cube DNS and they already have coverage for that in conformance. Um, and they, um, they did um, inform me that it is conformant with the, uh, with the replacement as well. So I'll be following with the two more features. Um, I have a proposal for how this can be folded into the release team's task itself, and that is coming further down in the agenda. We'll discuss it when we get to Okay, excellent. Uh, the core DNS one is uh, especially interesting because it's in an external repository. Uh, so I would encourage folks to take a look at that one and just uh, think critically through that whole dependency. Uh, it, it is a, a new world that we're moving into where uh, some of the default components are no longer in the Kubernetes repository. Uh, I think we will see more of that where, as cloud provider extraction project moves on uh, and many of the external cloud providers are already in that world. Uh, so please help think through that and anticipate issues in this whole process. Uh, so I wanted to give a quick update on a uh, discussion at SIG Architecture, I think two weeks ago now. Uh, there was, uh, there were some questions raised in the steering committee meeting, I believe, uh, and maybe Tim St. Clair can give an update here as well, because I think he was in both of these meetings. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to give a quick update here and then Tim, you can jump in if I misrepresent or you have more to add. Uh, I think the high level theme uh, was that we need to do a better job of visibility uh, and communication within the conformance working group to articulate and clarify what the ongoing efforts are and how they play into the broader vision. Uh, and one of the confusing things I think for uh, SIG Architecture and some others in the community at large uh, is that CNCF has contracted a vendor, Globant, uh, to help with closing a sort of one-time amnesty for missing tests and improving flakiness. Uh, for end-to-end -end tests, we would like to be conformance tests. Uh, and I have some proposals for process improvements further down here. Uh, but broadly, 
uh, those vendors were working on first PRs, sort of starter projects for what would be a, a new hire in a, in a company. Uh, and I think conflating the conformance aspect of a new end-to-end -end test with the test itself uh, caused some concern and alarm that it was happening outside of the existing SIGs. Uh, and so we talked more about including the SIG leadership in those areas. One was API machinery. I don't remember what the other one was, honestly. Uh, Node, I think. Uh, and I think by the time this conversation had happened, those SIGs had already been pulled in and, uh, and we tried to distinguish between the two very distinct steps. One is adding an end-to-end -end test, uh, which is not a steering committee SIG architecture level decision. A SIG can certainly add more EDE tests and improve their own coverage. Uh, and the second distinct step is proposing that that test be promoted to becoming a conformance test. Uh, and that is where SIG architecture and the steering committee do have uh, input and responsibilities. Uh, so I think those were the two high level outcomes uh, and working more within SIG testing uh, visibly for the vendor was also guidance we got. Uh, Tim, any more to add? I saw you on here before, but I don't see your icon on here. No, that pretty much summarizes it. So I think folks were listening and are taking corrective measures and I think that's appropriate. So uh, as long as we're just closing the loop on the communications chain, then I think we're probably good. Excellent. Uh, also in that SIG architecture meeting, we had a discussion about API Snoop, uh, which is an excellent tool. I think Hippie Hacker is here on this call as well. Uh, Chris, would you like to give a, a Quick shout out to API Snoop, uh, status and direction for three to five minutes. Sure, that would be great. Um, I've tried to initiate some conversations on the, um, the mailing list, uh, following up to our conversations uh, last time. Um, this morning uh, after I, I posted, or last night I posted information about um, possibly uh, mirroring the Sonoboy um, scanner approach to allowing our community to easily contribute um, their logs, hopefully in exchange for some instant uh, uh, analyzation to show what part of the APIs they're using and possibly um, maybe identify some practices like automatic RBAC generation and some other incentives um, to contribute their data. Um, but uh, the steps were a little complex currently with having to set up things with the API server um, it was really nice to wake up this morning to the KEP proposal for um, dynamic audit configuration by uh, Mr. Barker. Um, and in addition to that, we went ahead. If you can pull the two sunburst charts up side by side for kube test and Sonoboy, um, we're still looking to kind of inspect and identify why we have differences um, in the, the test coverage results for different tools. Um, uh, but these, these two charts do show an increase um, from our last results um, uh, from, from May 24. Uh, we've also created an API Snoop Slack channel. Uh, if you'd like to engage and uh, we'd love to help anybody to go through the process of sub um, submitting the logs. Um, and also we would love some feedback and thoughts on how can we drive our CapEx um, well. It, at this point, it seems um, like a conversation with uh, each of the CapEx we're interested in. Uh, I know that there's interest right now in driving pod API utilization. So we have a separate uh, breakdown to make it a little easier to focus on what our test coverage is for uh, looking at only pods. Um, but uh, I don't know that we have enough data for a prioritized list of what AP, pod APIs we're using. I think um, uh, an intelligent selection of which uh, CAPEX we would focus on to help generate that data would be some great feedback. Um, Rowan, did you have some additional features that we didn't add or some thoughts? I guess I had a couple of extra um, thoughts about other possible features playing around with the E2E stuff. 
um, uh, so things that could be interesting to explore is um, the ability to show the differences uh, between coverage and ETE runs. Um, so across like, you know, you take an, one ETE conformance run and then the next version, you take the next one and you can show the differences, what's changed. Um, to provide like a, like to be able to focus, Chris has just gone through that, um, on a certain area of the APIs. Um, to show a timeline graph maybe of coverage over time as tests are added. Um, and then like there's also the the prioritized list that we um, we talked about some time ago, which would be interesting to explore more. I think that's all I've got in terms of other potential features that are going around in my head right now. Thanks for that, Rowan. I really encourage um, some active feedback on the the mailing the the thread on all of the lists, and please feel free to reach out to us directly on API Snoop Slack channel so that we can engage the community more. Um, it would be uh, I, the idea of um, using the dynamic um, uh, configuration for either what exists today um, and looking forward to using audit. I'd love some feedback on that as well in particular. I have a quick question uh, if we have time. The, you said there was a difference in the test results between kube test and Cinebuy? Yeah, could we bring those up side by side? Uh, which cloud provider were you running on? Uh, G GCE. It's, uh, um, Rowan, do you want to take over for a bit and, and talk about how you started those? Sure. So I can explain how we gathered both of those. Um, we used uh, the E, the hack slash E to E to bring up a cluster on GCE. And then um, for the kube tests um, E to E, we basically uh, just to hack slash e to e go test. And then um, for Sonoboy, we basically brought up a cluster using hack slash e to e and then deployed Sonoboy straight onto that um, via kubectl. So, so the, uh, the one thing that comes to mind, there is a parameter that's specified to the test, which is the provider. And not all tests will run. Uh, defaultly, I think kube test makes a lot of suppositions about the provider defaulting to GCP, where uh, Sonobuoy specifically does not. So the it, that that provider flag actually turns tur enables or disables extra tests. So are you seeing less number of tests being run on Sonobuoy versus uh, kube test? Slightly less, yeah. I think um, uh, two thirty-five. Uh, for Sonobui, or maybe a couple more for a cube test. Let's see. Yeah, the most likely, yeah, the most likely explanation for that is the provider arg. So if you if you change the provider arg into Sonobui, which there is a flag for that, you should probably get parity. Great. Thanks for that information, Tim. That's awesome. Real work getting done in the meeting. Uh, <laughs> I want to call out. Uh, the, the, this is just a really promising effort, so please do take some time and look through it. Uh, I especially appreciate the way uh, that you guys are, are using the the appropriate mechanisms for gathering this information instead of building in some extra layers and things that have to be maintained alongside. So using audit logs to understand what is being exercised and how. Uh, and I'm particularly interested in figuring out how to uh, get more information about the particular verbs and payloads uh, and the range of options in some of those endpoints uh, that are more frequently used than some other more obscure endpoints. I think that will really help in the prioritization effort. So great work, really appreciate this. And others, please do take a look uh, and give feedback. Well, and, and I, I do need to point out that the work is at a little bit of a crossroads. So this would be a really useful next couple of weeks to come back and say, hey, here are the three natural directions to go from here that could provide real useful information. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Mitra uh, has a question, it sounds like. Yeah, um, my 
probably some we already know the answer, but where does the code for API snoop currently? And is that part of the core Kubernetes or custom Kubernetes? I, I'm sorry, Mitra, can you speak up or move it closer to the mic? Yes. Uh, I was just asking where the code lives for API snoop currently, whether it's in the Kubernetes repo or test infra. Could you hear that? The question was around where is the code for API Snoop? Yeah, I just pasted it, pasted it in. Oh, great. So um, it's in CNC, yeah. And I mean, there's no, we'd be happy to move it to Kubernetes, but obviously wouldn't start there. Great. Okay. Uh, let's move along. Thank you for that. Uh, and thanks, Yago. So, uh, just a couple of updates I think should be a standing agenda item going forward, uh, which is to raise awareness about tests that are proposed for promotion to conformance tests. Uh, these are the ones that I found and I just wanted to go through them quickly. Uh, one is to promote the aggregator EDE test to conformance and the PR is linked here. Uh, please take a look, give feedback if you have concerns. Uh, I expect as we have more energy going into prioritization, uh, we will see more of this. And I just want to make sure we have a mechanism for communicating those. Uh, the other is adding a watch EDE test to a conformance test. Uh, and one thing I noticed was just there isn't a consistent format uh, or, or labels applied to these necessarily at this point. Uh, and my suggestion going forward uh, is to please help me encourage and uh, spread the word that adding conformance tests is really two distinct steps. We talked about it a little bit before in the context of vendors, but I don't see it as being any different for any community member. Uh, first is to add or modify an existing E2E -E test, and then in a completely separate PR to propose promotion to conformance. Uh, and I suggest that we use the format promote something EDE test to conformance format so that it can be more easily discoverable uh, and be sure to add the area conformance label. Uh, anyone have additional uh, suggestions on that or feedback? If not, I propose that we adopt that direction. I think if you do the conformance it portion, uh, just at the, there's a, a SIG architecture PR reviews that probably needs to be poked. I know that Brian did that indirectly on the watch PR, but you can specify at Kubernetes SIGs, uh, at Kubernetes slash SIG architecture PR reviews. SIG architecture? Yep. I'll, I'll link to it in the, in the doc. We can also make Prow basically recognize and label. You have to really project through my yeah. laptop microphone, sorry. Okay, uh, we have to basic, we could also basically make Prow recognize like uh, conformance tests and label them based on just the, the way the, the PR comes in. Like if it is like structured the way in the format that you suggest, Jago, then we can automatically add the conformance label. Might be a small enhancement to the. Okay, so uh, we'll move in this direction. It sounded like there were uh, a couple of uh, suggested improvements around automation supporting this process. Uh, but please, if you see folks adding a conformance, a test, and immediately proposing that it be a conformance test, try to reinforce that these are two distinct steps. That will help to avoid confusion and concern uh, and tests getting lost in the fray. Uh, next up, proposal to bake conformance into release process and back to <coughs> Aish for this. Yeah, um, this actually uh, came out of um, making sure that any feature that's going to stable um, or release, uh, we've, um, we've done the due diligence to ensure that Either it is required, it is already present in the conformance suite, or needs to be um, needs to be represented, or there's it needn't be part of the conformance suite. So um, towards that, um, uh, I plan to take this proposal to the release team, where um, 
one of the roles, hopefully the CI signal lead role, or maybe the features lead, depending on who they think it's more appropriate for. When they get all the feature requests, look at the stable features and follow up with the owners um, and ask for end-to-end -end tests and confirmance um, coverage for those tests. Um, that's one part of the proposal. Um, that way we won't be accumulating debt uh, when it comes to confirmance coverage. Um, the second um, uh, initiative is to, for at the beginning of every release, uh, come up with a target set of um, APIs or uh, SIGs where we'll focus on to increase confirmance coverage. Uh, for V12, we are thinking, um, as we spoke about it, it'll be mostly Node and API machinery that we'll focus on to increase coverage. So, um, so that way, every release we have a few uh, tests going into coverage, uh, to in going into confirmance. And the third one was um, as part of another um, uh, discussion we had uh, with SIG testing. Uh, we do have a confirmance dashboard, but currently um, this dashboard is not being looked into by the CI signal lead because it's not a part of the SIG release dashboard. It exists as its own dashboard. So sometimes we do miss signals where um, a confirmance test fails. So we just want to make sure that this dashboard is also looked into um, as part of release blocking. Um, so one proposal that we have is to move this confirmance dashboard into the SIG release uh, dashboards as well, so that it gets looked into on an ongoing basis. Um, this way, any new confirmance test uh, that gets into the suite, we can make sure that it's not flaking, and also it can help us gather official numbers on an ongoing basis as well. So these are the three things. Do you know whether or not it makes sense to at least have, because right now the default provider for everything is pretty much GCP. Do you know if it makes sense to have at least one other provider, one co other common provider, to make sure that that signal is consistent? Because even even if we hope it was always the case that these things should be abstracted away, uh, the history has taught me that they're not. Uh, so if we are going to do the due diligence, uh, uh, do you think it makes sense to enable that for at least two, more than more than one? Um, we do have OpenStack results flowing into the confirmance dashboard right now. Um, so we do have GC and OpenStack there. But yeah, I can definitely go back and then have one more provider. In there. Do you have a suggestion? Or? Um, whoever's going to offer the resources. <laughs> Just say there's more than one, right? Yeah, we have, we have talked with uh, AWS as well and tends to uh, run the conformance test suite at least uh, on every submit and submit those test results back. Uh, this dashboard came out of the cloud provider extraction where this becomes increasingly important to ensure that making a change and testing only on one provider doesn't inadvertently break others. Uh, our hope is that this is a, a compelling benefit and folks will opt in and submit those test results back. Uh, if you are a representative of a uh, a provider or distribution and would like to participate in that, uh, feel free to reach out here on the, on the conformance or cloud provider working group mailing lists uh, and we can uh, set up with the right instructions to run those. But fully, fully agree we should get as broad participation as we possibly can. Uh, looks like we're on to special topics. Oh, uh, this reminds me, there was also a request in the SIG architecture meeting to convert this document about conformance testing for Kubernetes to Markdown and submitting it to GitHub uh, to ensure discoverability and visibility. Uh, and Mitra has uh, signed up for that AI. So that was our first special topic. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot more to say there, so we'll move on to the next one, uh, which is just planning going forward. Uh, so far, we've been somewhat ad hoc in uh, the planning for each release and, and just best effort for individual SIGs to submit tests that they propose become conformance tests. Uh, trying to push that earlier in the Kubernetes process we already have. Uh, so trying to ensure that by feature freeze we have at least articulated those goals. Uh, I don't know if that's a hard requirement yet or if that's just guidance. I'm just spitballing here, honestly. 
but trying to push earlier in the process has always seemed to help. Uh, so that is the intention. Uh, and the call to action here is this whole effort is really about ensuring the portability of workloads for end users across providers of Kubernetes. Uh, if you are a representative of a SIG, uh, please go back to your SIG and uh, the best efforts in this whole area will start from within SIGs that already know what E2E -E tests they, uh, that ought to be part of conformance or they wish were but are too flaky. Uh, this is an area these vendors could possibly help out in if there isn't bandwidth. Um, but please take, take the message back and help push on these areas through the appropriate SIGs. So we have made it through our formal agenda, 28 minutes to resume. I think uh, William maybe is fired if I have my numbers right, uh, as my efficiency trumps his. Uh, anyone else have special topics or announcements? No, I want to thank you, Jago, for stepping in. And then um, I believe we are on a <clears throat> monthly cadence now, which I, I think is probably about appropriate, uh, given the maturity of the, this effort. But uh, obviously, the mailing list is there for anything that comes up more urgently. I had a quick topic as well. I was just wondering uh, if we should start thinking about KubeCon. Uh, there is a call for proposal that's due in a couple of weeks for Shanghai and then for Seattle. Uh, just to kind of gather our thoughts around what we're doing with respect to conformance there. And also maybe we should, we could do a potential workshop where people write more tests. Uh, it's a possibility. So I just thought we could brainstorm a little bit, maybe by the next meeting or via Slack. People um, I appreciate you bringing it up, Mithra, because we, we, the deadline for that is six weeks from now <clears throat> with the uh, um, CFP closing, the deep dive and intros on the same schedule. Uh, I, I guess my impression is that both the intro deep dive meetings in Copenhagen were quite well attended. Um, I, I would love to do uh, an intro to this, at least in Copenhagen, and so I, I would, I mean, in Shanghai, and so I don't know if um, anyone here would be able to volunteer that they, they can make the trip for it. Um, Deepak, I, I don't know if you'll be able to make it in particular, or, uh, or Brad. Uh, I'll be there, of course. And then, uh, um, I, I definitely. This is Brad, if you're talking to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I would encourage you to, submit a talk as well on uh, related topics perhaps, and then uh, you'd be in a good position to, uh, to help manage an intro deep dive there or one or the other. And then for Seattle, I, I presume we're gonna wanna, wanna do that. Um, Mithra, we, we have the ability to do workshops. We haven't really done them in the past. We could also do pre-day workshops. Um, I, I'm not sure there's a ton of outstanding work right now for that. So did you have a, a specific idea of what it might cover? No, I, I can't hear you, Mithra. I was thinking that we'd have a better idea of the APIs that we need to include coverage for. And even though we have the vendors, we could do some sort of a targeted workshop where we sit together and kind of hash out or write some I, I'm open to it. <clears throat> Maybe we should take it to the list and, um, and, and, and brainstorm on it. I mean, what's <clears throat> strange is that I sort of expected that we would have half the vendors on board with the program and then we would do a workshop for the other half to convince them that they should really participate. But we, we basically have everyone now. So the, the question is, is what do we want folks to do additionally or differently or more? Uh, good question. I think we should take that to the mailing list. There are probably other folks who have ideas and thoughts on that too. Uh, so let's broaden this conversation there. 
And thank you all for taking the time. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording if I can figure that out.